Hey, welcome in everyone. We're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to play Talisman. This is going to be an introductory video and just a basic uh, run through of the game. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, what I propose is maybe something, if we can get enough people, a few people anyhow, friends that I have on Steam to do something like Talisman Tuesdays or something, a little alliteration or maybe Sorceress Sundays. I don't know. Anyhow, Talisman uh, has been around for a long, long time, since 1983. It's it's great. It's a great game. It's uh, high fantasy. Uh, wizards and lots of dragons, as I'll show you. Uh, you name it, you got it. Uh, a board game uh, where RNG rolls the day, where it's very cutthroat uh, against your opponent. I, the idea is to well, there's there's many endings to the game. So first, let's look at the collection, what's available. Now, if we decide to do this, if anyone wants to do the online play, which we have here, uh, as long as one person has all the expansions, all you need is the base game. Well, I have all the expansions, so uh, I'd love to do this. So leave it in the comments if you'd like to kind of do something that. Uh, yeah, ID Jester has uh, his, his role playing game going on, and Strat Chris uh, has his going, I guess. As far as I know, I haven't seen anything. Um, but this would be fun to play with friends. We could get on Vice and uh, have a blast. So let's look at the collection here uh, of Talisman and its expansions. For those of you who played the board game, uh, which I have it as well. Uh, you know that it's a it's a large setup, even if you're just playing the base game. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, to keep track of everything. Uh, and then the cleanup, of course, uh, is huge. So let's look at just the base game right now. We can browse everything that we have here. And if you look, you see these are all kinds of expansions. And again, you don't need these if we're going to play online together. Uh, but this is a fun game, even if you just buy it uh, by yourself to play against the AI. So let's look at this. And this will allow me to explain uh, some of the cards, what they do. So we have, first you have characters. So you have an assassin, a druid, a dwarf. Uh, there's, there's a ton. This is just the base game. So you have a lot to choose from. So let's go back and choose a couple here, just so you can see. And I can explain the game, so let's go to the Assassin. So we see that every every character in Talisman has special abilities. Uh, some of them are, are absolutely just wicked. So for the Assassin, his special abilities. You may assassinate when you attack any character or creature. You cannot assassinate when you are attacked by another character. When you assassinate, battle takes place as normal, except that your victim may not roll a die to add to their strength. If you win, you must force the loser to lose one life. You cannot take an object or gold instead. And I'll explain these to you. You may not assassinate while at the crown of command. So you start in the city, and I'll show you that on the game board, and your alignment is able we look down here, we see a number of things. We have uh, strength, the craft, lives, faith, and gold. So strength is what it says. It's your strength in battle. Uh, there's two types of battle in Talisman. There's regular physical battle, and then there's psychic combat or craft. So you might think of this in terms of uh, in, in Dungeons and Dragons magic. It's the number of lives that you have. Here's your fate counters. Fate allows you to re-roll the dice in case you get into something that's a bit, uh, yes, a dodgy. And then, of course, gold is self-explanatory. These numbers are different for every character, however. It would get quite boring if everyone had the same thing. So let's click off the assassin. And let's go to another that uh, I usually play. At least I did a lot with the base game. I can find you. Where are you? I, there he is, the warrior. So you see in contrast, that's about his special abilities. You may roll two dice in battle and use the higher attack roll to determine your attack score. You may use two weapons at the same time. 
you start in the tavern. Where else? If you're a warrior, that's where you're going to start, aren't you? And your alignment is neutral. So again, let's think of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You have, uh, but this doesn't get into the lawful and all the other stuff. Uh, you're either good, neutral, or evil. So here, you see we have uh, four strength, two craft, five lives, one fate. So the warrior, uh, you don't, this offsets the, the two dice in the battle. And of course you got one gold. So you're, uh, I guess, a sort of cell sword, if anything. So I'll move on now. <clears throat> so again, even if we, even if you just play the base game, and of course, this being uh, a dice rolling game uh, with a lot of cards that change the rules of the game as you go along. It's it really even just the base game has a virtually uh, limitless uh, playability. If we were to do the permutations, just with the event cards, there's 106. Uh, you could never you would never see the same game uh, even before. Uh, the galaxy was created until it burns out. So it's really, and it's a game in which you can die in five turns or you can emerge victorious. So there we go. So next we have adventure cards. We have different types of events. There are different types of cards. So this one's an event, an angel. So for instance, you would draw her from the adventure pile, which again, we're just going to play a little bit in a while of the, uh, of the basic game, but I want to show you some of the expansions. So for the angel, it's an event that you draw. So as you're, you're, you're basically you're adventuring around the board, right, in this land, and you run across events and monsters and, uh, uh, Yankee fans, if you will, or if you're into, uh, the football, you know, Manchester United, whatever, Chelsea, Liverpool, Belfast, Dublin, so, but for the angel, if you're of good alignment, you gain one life. If you're able, you lose one life. There's no effect if you're neutral. The angel then departs to the discard pile. We'll talk about that. So you have other things here like the blizzard. For two turns, uh, instead of rolling the dice, for two turns, uh, for instance, characters can only move uh, one space per turn, and then the blizzard goes away. Now... One of the keys to talisman is to learn how to use what would appear to be a negative into a positive. So if you're near a place where if we come up uh, with one, with, it's advantageous for you to go to that uh, uh, to that space, then this is a good thing. Then you're just sort of moving back and forth. So you'll learn to do that. So we're not going to go through all these, obviously. Ah, uh, there's a devil, and evil darkness, this evil darkness from the netherworlds sweeps the land. All characters, except those of evil alignment, must miss one turn. The darkness then vanishes to the discard pile. So anything can happen here. So let's move along and let's find a few of the monsties that we're going to find. Here's a lovely thing, but before we go to that, we have Market Day, for instance. You run into this, you draw this from the event. Uh, it's market day across the land, clockwise starting with yourself. All characters may immediately buy objects at these prices, and then it backs off to the discard pile. So anything can happen in Talisman, and it will. So again, we have more events. Let's try to find some. The next class that we have are, are, are term followers. Now you see that she's cursed, but some followers are actually very good, so... But a follower is someone that normally you can choose to take with you. In this case, if you draw the hag, you, you don't have a choice. So she's cursed. And we see here on, on her character card, you must take her as a follower. All other followers immediately leave you, discard them. Sounds like most of my girlfriends discarding me. <laughs> you may have no other followers until you rid yourself of the hag by visiting the village mystic. Even if he ignores you. So, because of the RNG nature, because of the dice roll, and of course you, you want to try to get to the village mystic to get rid of this uh, sort of dodgy person. <laughs> Move on, now we have enemies. So we have an ape. 
pretty self-explanatory, savage ape terrorizing. You see, as a strength of tree, so to beat him, you've got to roll, of course, higher than a tree. If you tie him, it's called a standoff, nothing happens. If you lose, you lose a life. They get stronger, so they're two bandits, strength of four. But rather than just attack you, like the ape, for instance, or the bear, uh, a bandit is marauding in this area. Will not attack if you pay one gold. Will remain here until he's killed. Most enemies do remain in that space. Let's move on. We've got doppelgangers. Doppelgangers are not fun. Doppelganger always has the same total strength as its opponents, including any bonuses. If you kill it, gain one strength, but you must discard it instead of taking it as a trophy or remain here until it is killed. Let's talk about trophies for a moment. When you, when you accrue seven points, whether it's for monsters that you fight in regular combat or monsters or enemies that you fight in a psychic magic combat. Once once their trophy value you get up to seven, which we see here on the dragon, you can trade them in and you can add if you're a strength character like the assassin or like the uh, warrior, for instance, that we showed you earlier, then you gain another strength. Uh, if it's a, a some sort of uh, magic creature, then you gain one craft. The more craft you have, then you get spells. So we'll go on to that. And of course, it wouldn't be a fantasy game without a dragon. As you'll see, I'll show, again, just a couple of the expansions. There's many of them. Uh, but yeah, you have to have dragons or it's not fantasy. Very tough to kill. Early game. So let's see if we can move on now. We're looking at some more enemies. We even have lions. Ogres. Serpents, and then we have some things that just these are more that you rack up for for trophies, if you will. Wolves. I have to make a, a, a comment. I don't like that wolves are always pecked on. Uh, they're lovely animals, but you find it in most fantasy literature. At least Tolkien, the master, that he made them dire wolves, so you, you don't get attacked by regular wolves. Uh, in Tolkien's work, so that makes me happy. Here is a difference now when you tell between a magical creature and uh, a regular creature, if you will. So you see here that the wolf, the wild boar, you see that they have strength. Well, the key word over here now for this bastard is craft. And he's got a craft of ten. He's a demon. So of course he's not a nice fella. So you have to beat him with your craft. And again, once we get into the game, into a bit of a playthrough, I'm not going to do a complete game of Talisman tonight, uh, but uh, you'll see how that works out if we run into one of these tossers. So a daemon has appeared here from the underworld to cause chaos in the area. We'll remain here until it is killed. And you can see his craft. And he's, uh, if you defeat him, you defeat him, he's worth a lot for you. He's an instant, you can trade him for trophies. If you're a strength character, as opposed to a craft character, though, this is a, You hope you don't run into such things, and vice versa, of course. So, there we have more uh, enemies. But we move on to the next class. What we have here are strangers. These are creatures people that you will run into in your travels possibly. So for instance here we have an enchanter and you see that his type is stranger. So an enchanter seeks an able adventurer. To the first character landing here with a craft of four or more who will grant one of the following wishes of their choice then vanish. Gain one spell, gold, strength, craft, life or fate or teleport to any space in this region. The ending of the game, the the base ending of the game, in other words, the one that came with it, is the crown of command. The idea is to get to the crown and defeat everyone else on the board. So all your opponents, all the other players. So you want your, but no matter what the ending is, if it's a hidden ending, uh, a revealed ending, or you're just playing the vanilla game with the, with the crown of command, 
Uh, you want to build your character, so there's there's again you have an RPG element to it where you are creating your own narrative. So there we have a fairy and a healer and a hermit and so many more. Let's move on and let's see what else we have. Followers. We spoke about followers before, so again you see the keyword follower. Alchemist. The alchemist can convert any number of objects you have into both objects or things like sword shields, uh, other things like that, uh, boats, rafts. Each item will turn into one gold. Uh, he cannot reverse the procedure, so choose wisely. What is it? And that Indiana Jones movie in the Last Crusade and the, the Holy Grail. He chose wisely. No, I'm sorry. He chose poorly. So you see, we have more followers. Uh, here we have this is an important one. Normally, you can only carry four objects at a time with your character, but you could pick up. A follower like a mule, for instance, and the mule uh, can carry an extra four objects for you. But if you lose the mule, you leave any surplus objects of your choice in the space you're in. So that's a good one to find. But again, there's no guarantee because of the deck. And just the adventure deck in the base game is 106 cards. And since order does matter, if you think of the permutations, 106 factorial, even taken into account that there's a few uh, duplicates in the deck, you realize how absolutely beyond astronomical uh, it is in this game. If you want to do something fun, there's an article that talks about a number, just Google it, uh, the number of possible ways to just put an order a deck of 52 playing cards. Uh, it's it's mind blowing. Maybe some night when I do a a, a space engine uh, when we explore space, or if I'm doing No Man's Sky, maybe I'll prattle along about that a bit. Let's move on and see if we can find some more other classes of cards. So now we come to objects, and you have regular objects, and you have magic objects. So there, for instance, we have an amulet. You can cast spells, including the command spell. So, but no spells will affect you other than the command spell. So if you're, if you're a fighting character, if you're a strength character, this is good. Because you, if you can't cast spells, it doesn't matter. But no other spells that your opponents cast on you to try to give you a bit of a shillelagh. They're not going to bother you. So we have a cross. If you're able, you do not lose a life in the chapel. If you're good, you do not lose a life in the graveyard. You'll see this again on the game board. Uh, you may choose to automatically destroy any spirits without resorting to psychic combat. Spirits destroyed in this manner cannot be kept as trophies. So. If you run into something that's just too big for you, you can destroy, but you don't get it as a trophy. That's the Holy Grail. He chose for you. So if we run into that, expect me to say that. So the magic bells. More magic objects. These are important. The talisman. Hence the name of the game. This is a magic object. You may only enter the Valley of Fire if you have one of the Fable Talismans. The Valley of Fire leads to the Crown of Command, and that is your goal. And again, no matter what the ending is set for the game, you've got to get to the Crown of Command. So these are absolutely important. You don't want to lose these. And of course, then we have regular objects. Self-explanatory. We've got bags of gold. We've got a raft. And as you'll see on the game board, there's going to be a river. So this says, on your next turn, instead of your normal move, you may choose to cross the river to a space opposite the one you're in. Whether you cross or not, you lose the raft as it cannot be carried with you. More gold, of course. Two bags, water bottle. 
Of course, you got thing, things to uh, help your character. Armor, shields, helmets, axes, swords. Axes allow you to build rafts if you're in the woods of the forest. Then we have places also drawn from the adventure deck. So, for instance, the cave. You roll the die. Okay, we'll remain here for the rest of the game. See what you discover instead by rolling one die. So if you roll one, you're attacked by a dragon with a strength of seven. Two, attacked by a goblin, strength of two. If you roll a three, you're lost for a turn. Four, five, you gain two gold. Six, you gain three gold. There are some things in the expansions that would get rid of these places, but for in normal play, it's going to stay there. So again, you see how fun the game will always change on you. And the game loves to hate you. And it hates to love you. Fountain of Wisdom. Uh, again, we don't want to talk about all of these. We'll be here all night. Marshes and mazes and shrines and days of light. Then we got the spells. Spells, of course. If you're playing a sort of magic character of high craft. So you, you, you cast these on your opponents, sometimes on yourself. So for instance, we have acquisition. Cast at the start of your turn before you move. Take one object from your choice or one gold from any character. So you understand that there's all kinds of lovely things. You can't, your opponents can't see the spells that you have. Those remain hidden, as you'll see in the game. And have we gone through everything? I don't know if this is. I have follower. The armor objects. And there it is. This is the goal of the game, of the base game, any of, of the whole game. But the crown of command. If a character is on the crown of command and no other characters are present, they must cast one command spell at the start of each of their turns. If a 1, 2, or 3 is rolled, the spell has no effect on a 4, 5, or 6. All other characters lose a life. If a character is on the crown of command and there is another character present, they must encounter the other character instead of casting the command spell. So essentially you have to bash on each other until one's dead, and then you should destroy everyone else. And we have the race to the crown, which is simple. If you would rather have this end in, the first player to reach the crown wins. But uh, that's boring. You don't want to do that. You want to kill everyone. Let's close this one. Move we'll down to one of the others. Again, you see there's so many, and each one is themed. So we're not going to show them all, but so we have the Raper. The Raper deals with that, uh, with, with death. Give me one moment, please. <sighs> I'm back. The chores never end. Had to shut off the dishwasher. So the Raper is a death theme expansion. Shadows falling across the countryside. Death himself wanders the land. Can the heroes fulfill their epic quests with every specter of the Grim Raper and in their every move? So for instance, in this expansion adds four characters, 90 more adventure cards, 26 spell cards, and 12 warlock quest cards, which we'll talk about probably in another video. And the Grim Raper, a dark figure that other players manipulate against each other. We're not be play we might play actually we will we'll play with the Raper just to show how he works. So some of these are smaller expansions. And then you have the larger expansions, such as the dungeon. This one adds a whole new region to the game board. So the ancient door crumbles to splinters and the dungeon lies revealed. 
Do you have the courage to plunge into the darkness and confront its perils? Legends say that at the deepest pits of the abyss, the Lord of Darkness stands watch over a vast treasure that even includes a portal that leads to the renowned Crown of Command. The dungeon adds a new region to the game for heroes to explore, plus five characters, the formidable gladiator, the noble Amazon, the dashing swashbuckler, enigmatic gypsy, and sagacious philosopher. Of course, if you watch Peaky Blinders, as I do, then you've got Mr. Shelby, who is it? One of the uh, Shelby clan or gypsies. Adds 91 dungeon cards, 20 spell cards, 10 more adventure cards, and 10 treasure cards. Brave untold dangers, and discover what lies in the darkness beneath the world of talisman. Finally, one more I'll just show you again. We have the Blood Moon, this is Werewolves, the Firelands, based on um, Arabic. The Ifrit. But, I'm going to browse this one for a moment, because... Again, what is fantasy if you don't have dragons? Three draconic lords, beings of near infinite power and malevolence, have returned to the Firelands to claim the fabled crown of command. With them come legions of evil dragons, and we'll see, I'm going to show you a bit of this, there's legions. Harnessing the awesome powers of their dark masters, now the land quakes beneath their oppressive rule. And the quest for the crown is more terrifying and dangerous than ever before. The dragon expansion adds six characters, Conjurer, Dragon Hunter, Dragon Priestess, she's a bit of a babe, <laughs> Dragon Rider, Fire Wizard, and Minotaur, plus 138 dragon cards and five alternate endings. So the other ones as well will add alternative endings. Let's look at this expansion for a moment. And then we're going to jump into a game. So there's our some new characters. There, there she is. She wants to have my children. <laughs> a dragon rider, she's not a bit of a, as, as, as some would say, puppet. So, of course, we have events. We're not going to go through these, but you can see everything is dragon themed. Let's see if we can find some of these. So there, for instance, we have from China, we have an Eastern Dragon. He's got a strength of six and a craft of six. So he's tough. They're all tough. There's an Amber Dragon. And there's always a condition, or, or for the most part. So when we talked about in the base game, where you you run into a uh, an enemy, you fight it. Well. In other expansions, there's enhancements. So, for instance, with the Amber Dragon, it's a rather dapper fella. Before you engage the dragon in battle, it makes a breath attack. Will one die? If the result is equal to or higher than your strength, you must miss your next turn. It will remain here until it is killed. So many dragons. And you see how fast I did? And how many we missed? Ancient Dragon. If you are defeated, in addition to losing a life, you suffer the Dragon Rage of the Dragon King. We won't be talking about that tonight because we'll not be playing with this expansion because it's very complicated. Uh, of course, everything remains there until it's killed. So you have even Drakes, which are sort of a bit weaker dragons. Not much, though. You have a very... Dragons everywhere. Look, I'm going to go fast. Oh, there's even a luck dragon. So you can even have a dragon as your follower. I don't want to go to the end. I don't want to reveal the endings. You can see there's even... Look how fast I've gone. Dragons everywhere. Dragons, drakes, another. So. Again, we look at this. He has... He has a condition, Plague Dragon. Before you engage the dragon in psychic combat, it makes a breath attack. Will one die if the result is equal to or higher than your strength? You lose one strength. 
So, and that remains permanent. It's not just on that throne. You have to find a way to regain what you lost. Same as the Shadow Dragon. But, then you lose kind of brothers, I guess. Not very friendly. Go fast again. So you have your, of course, your uh, Venomous Dragon. And again, you see different. These are craft. So they're fighting dragons. You better be ready. And you have little sprite dragons. It's a cute power, isn't he? Saint George. Uh, the other thing the talisman does is it borrows from many, many things. Uh, and in this one, uh, you'll find that it uh, it borrows uh, a lot from the Book of Revelation as well as. Uh, Judeo-Christian mythology, so there we have St. George himself. And of course, me being an Orthodox Christian, he's one of the most important saints. And he's also a saint in the Catholic Church as well. Very important. So it's not just sort of uh, just from Tolkien, sort of fantasy, but as well uh, bringing in from the Bible, bringing in from Arabic folklore. Uh, I think there's even a bit of steampunk in this, I'm not sure. So we have elves and perhaps with the dragons, I don't know. Except the dragon lords themselves, which I can show you one of them, I suppose. Oh no, we're not done. So now we're coming into the other dragons. These require and wyverns, of course, or wyverns, depending upon how you like your coffee or tea. So we have cloud dragons, and these are strength dragons. So not all, so we we they're they're just. So many dragons. Now, the good news, of course, about the dragons is, well, there isn't any. They're just nasty. You, you, you just hope that you don't run into one because they're, they're just absolutely amazingly evil. We could do one rebuild ending if there's one. It's not, actually, it's not. There they are. These are the, uh, the dragon lords. Boris, Grelipus, Bartrax, H again, and we'll do uh, Bartrax because I like saying his name. A character confronting Bartrax must choose whether to attack his and strength or craft. Each time they defeat Bartrax, they must remove one life from this card and immediately attack him again. If the character is defeated, in addition to losing a life, their turn ends and they must suffer the Dragon Rage effect. If a character move, removes Bartrak's last life, they win the game. If another character has already removed some of Bartrax's lives, then the character only needs to remove his remaining lives to win the game. So you say he's rather nasty. He's got 14 strength, 10 craft. And there's the other. They become... Each will become Dragon Kings throughout the game. Again, if we play the dragon sometime uh, with with others, and I'm talking to you, my friend, uh, OG, original Gromyard, Gromyard uh, then we'll be able to, to uh, play with this. He's a, an experienced war gamer, does a lot of military games and other things. So I, I definitely suggest you check out his channel. And there's alternate endings, which I don't want to spoil, which make the beautiful artwork. So, we've done that. Let's go back and play. We'll set up a new game. And there's me and Baseless Eternal. Now I can click here and I can select my character. So, just for likeness sake, I'm going to be the assassin. Not normally one that I play. I'm also going to, uh, I'm just going to play against one other AI. And we'll pick, uh, we'll pick, she's rather cute, isn't she? The sorceress! So she begins the game with a spell. When you attack another character, you may choose to make the attack psychic combat. You may not do this when you're attacked by another character. You may attempt to beguile a character. 
like that you land on, allowing you to take one gold or object of your choice. To do so, roll one die. You must roll a six to beguile a good character, five or six for a neutral, or a four, five or six for a favorite character. So if you're able, maybe this isn't the bird you want. You may take anyone, follower except the maiden, unicorn or priestess from any character that you land on. And you can't take those because your alignment is evil. So she's, she will start from the graveyard. Her alignment is evil. She has two strength, four craft. So for every three craft that you have, you get a spell. So she has a spell already. Four lives, three fate, and a gold. We have that. We're going to set up what expansions. So let's disable. Let's make sure we just have the base game. We're not going to use the, uh, we have alternate endings, so we're just going to use this. There's, there's all, all the other ones that are possible in the game. So we're going into the basic vanilla game. So let's use the default ending. And you can see all the others, of course. You can choose characters. You can play uh, with random characters. You can choose to select. When the players to crown commands, yeah. So room stones, we're not going to use those tonight as well. I think that's it. We're not going to use the uh, the reaper, so we're just using the base game. The reaper's not enough, and I think we're ready. Let's start. So again, here we are. This is talisman without all the expansions or anything like that. This is the base game. So if if you were alive back in 1983, this is the game, although it looked different, much different. This is what you would have played, though. Okay, so you gained the spell. Uh, it looks like, oh, I picked uh, the wrong thing. I, I guess I let random. So, a lovely. <laughs> You've gained a spell. Press the spell deck above to draw the top spell card. So what am I? I love you. I love you, I And the prophetess. So I have I have to read this because I thought I picked the assassin, but I think I, I ticked the wrong thing. You begin the game with one spell. During the game, you always have at least one spell. Gain a spell each time. That's lovely. And uh don't you think I looked rather fetching? Whenever you have to draw adventure cards, you may discard one of your choice that you do not wish to encounter and draw one more card to replace it, which you must encounter. At any time during the game, you may look at the spell cards held by other characters. This could be rather fun, playing her. So I will draw a spell. And remember that my opponents can't see this, so I can cast this on any character at any time, and they will one die to determine the effect on them. Become a troll for three turns. If that happens to you, you lose. You're you're down to one, one life and one strength, and you, you lose all your gold, your followers, everything. It's not fun at all. Uh, lose all strength, lose all craft, uh, lose all gold, gain one strength, gain one life. Uh, so there you go. Nice. Uh, it's it's more fun than you can definitely imagine what it goes on. <laughs> so that's my spell. I'm not going to use these. Uh, these are something that we'll talk about in another video. But basically, uh, you can earn you earn these through play. You can buy them if you're a cheap bastard of course, but uh, don't buy them. Unlock them through play. You get different things that. Uh, that enhance your character, but I'm not going to use these. Ah, actually, it looks like I don't. So it's been a so I haven't played this one for a, a long time. So here we are. So let's start the game. Select up to three runes, wind stones for characters you wish. I guess it's going to make me do this, isn't it? Alright, so for... Uh, I want to 
want to have uh, I want I want her to be strong. Yeah. Now we start the game. So we roll the die. And there we are. We can zoom in on the board. And we see that in the chapel, if you're able, you lose a life. If you land there, you lose a life. There's nothing to stop it. If you're neutral, you can heal your life value. And if you're good, as I am, you can either heal up your life value for prey, or you can pray by rolling a die. You can be ignored or gain a life or a spell. So let's roll the die. You can see that this card's flashing. That's the spell. I'm not going to use it yet. Not this early. Let's roll the die. And you can see on the board, we have the highlights. So I can only move her really to here or to here. Not to here because I have to go through the Sentinel. And we'll explain him if we get to him. So if we click on a space, we can see that's uh, that's the draw card. So that's the woods. And that's the plains. So you've got to decide strategically what you want to do. And that has a lot to do with these four places, right? You've got the chapel, the city, the village, and the tavern. So let's move forward to here. And then we have our adventure deck. And we hope to draw a card. And we have an angel. If you're a good alignment, you gain one life if you're evil. So. Let's leave this alone right now. I should have turned off tutorials. Perhaps I should do that. Let's give it a minute here. Um. So what happens then is anything that you run into here, it's an <coughs> you encounter it. So we'll encounter this, and you'll see that my life total will go up from four to three to five, and that adds my turn. And then the monk will take his turn. He has three strength, three craft, and four lives. <coughs> Big choice for him. This is a thing where we we we, we should look at here. So he's left here. He's he's for the rest of the game. He can heal up to two lives per visit for any character free of charge. So if you get your arse basin by some enemy you make your way over here and you get get lives back it's a very important very strategic game that you got to deal with random of course so the die again we roll a bar so we can go to the hills or we can go to the fields just go to the fields and we click to draw a card. And we add two to our craft. Now, being a magic character, that's a good thing. So now if you see here on the blue, that's our number of craft that we've just gained. And that actually, if you see, it's here. It's an object. So we carry that and we don't want to lose that. So let's end our turn and let the monk go next. But this is a sticky situation because he has to encounter both. And the strength of these creatures and so you see now that the monk has lost a life. 
let's see how big. So we'll sketch her off to the woods. And always remember, of course, you can you can zoom in if you want. I'm gonna draw a card. A specter. So we're going to have our first battle. Spectre has remained here in this area. Remain here until I guess Kelly. Now I want to look at myself for a moment. I could choose if I want not to encounter this card or this event, this creature. But then I must. That's what this icon is here for. Our lovely are we again? <laughs> Never play this character for a prophetess. So I can choose then to pick a different card. And whatever I run into, I have to I have to encounter. So as I've I've got five lives and, and, and six craft, this should be a, a, a pretty easy fight to come open. So we're going to encounter the Spectre and Psychic on that. So you see here. We've got a craft of sex and the specter seen better days. She has a craft of three. So let's roll the die and see how old the battle goes. So we have nine. And we win this one. My attack score is nine. And hers is five. So we take this. So what's important that we look here? So you touch on the wrong button. So I have here now I have her. And you see now that she has a craft trophy value of three. Once I have seven, so another creature might be a four or there might be a two. But when I have enough of these trophies that I come up to the number seven, then I trade them in and I gain another. Turns more spells. Dismiss this. Close this. And that's what's what our monk does. He spent a fate counter because he wanted to go that way. He's got to fight a bandit. He's got a modifier. Should be alright, yeah. So he just beats him. And so if we look at our holy friend, see he has the bandit, and he has a strength trophy value of 4, so again when he has 7, when it totals 7, then he can train him and get another strength. So I want to see what the monk does. Your inner belief allows you to add your starting craft to your strength during battle, so that's his modifier. After rolling the die when praying, you may add one to the score. You may not use any weapon or armor during battle. Interesting. We're going to do just a couple more turns, just to get more cards in the board, so you can see. So for the monk, we were talking about strategy, so if this was someone playing the monk, he would want to get here to regain the life that he lost in that fight, or in that fight. So we're gonna. Don't you know if we want to go to the forest? Let's go to the woods. We go to the forest if you see here. Instead of drawing from the adventure deck, we will die to see what happens to us. Uh, as I only have a strength of two, I don't want to go there, obviously, until I, uh, until I sort of build that up. Go here. And I draw a card. And I've got a helmet. So if you're defeated in battle and you lose a life, roll a die. If you roll a six, the helmet protected you and you did not lose that life, so you still lost the battle. Choose to take it. For those pesky strength creatures. 
Let's take this. And let our mind go. He's taken. And he's picked up so I can carry four extra objects. That's the end of his turn. I should say, if we were playing with the Raper or the Blood Moon, after I'd make my move and do my encounters, when you roll a 1, you get to move Death, or you get to move the Werewolf. So it's a lovely way to sort of go after your opponents as well, very cutthroat. So we have our choice here of the Plains, or if we had a reason to go to the uh, City, which we might, just to show you, if we get the proper dice roll then. Raiders! A band of raiders attacks you and steals all your gold. They immediately stash the gold at the oasis and retreat to our house. You bastards, I don't want that. So, because I have an ability, I can choose. Now, there could be a risk here that I run into something big and nasty. Let's see. So, the ra they will stay there. And... The goblin... I could, I could have a bit of a problem there, but I have to face him. So you see here are we're the same in strength, so the die and hope, pray to the gods and goddesses. So we have a fight. He wrote a tree. <laughs> That's the end of the turn. Uh, we'll let the monk take his turn and then we're going to end with some final thoughts and uh, talk a bit more about some uh, talisman play with people. So the monk arrived in the tavern. He's taken. I'm not going to cast. I think we'll end this right here in terms of the game. Let's go to this. Could save it, but I'm just going to quit. Is that playing with the expansions? So there we are. That was a. Uh, an introduction to one of the greatest, uh, <coughs> pardon me, bard games that you can play, especially if you're into sort of fantasy and you want something with a touch of uh, Dungeons and Dragons to it or whatever, and you create your own narrative. And you can see just in the bit that we played that well, we didn't run into anything terribly dangerous, that the, the game is constantly in flux. If you'd like to play online, just look up uh, Friend Me on Steam, Beatles Eternally. But please leave a comment who you are on Steam so I know, so I'm not just getting so tosser. So that's Talisman. I'd love for, for friends to come and play. I'm looking for uh, anyone, but my friend, uh, Original Grognard, he's uh, agreed that he would, since he has two monitors, I don't right now, I'm poor, until I move back home, that he would be actually uh, streaming the game, but I would hope we would use my. Uh, my edition since I have all the expansion of Talisman. So join in, our Red Sox fan, Clinton Parks, everyone in the community. Uh, the base game of Talisman is, is uh, quite inexpensive on Steam, so you can pick it up then. Thank you, everyone. And that will end the stream of Talisman and for me. Until then, keep looking up. And yes, I'm sure I'm going to quit. Good night, everyone.